Hello there, Salim Momar here from the e-commerce money map podcast, bringing you another amazing guest. His name is Drew Blumenthal. Drew, welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me, Salim. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Drew is a marketing expert who's got experience working with numerous agencies and Fortune 500 businesses. He's harmed his experience in career. He's only 29 years old. He started his own firm in 2017, so five years in it, grown it very successfully, helping and offering services from paid ads to web development to organic social media growth. And so, Drew, you know, digital marketing, on, online marketing has grown exponentially over, over the last 10 years and more so the last two years since the pandemic. What is the toughest thing that you see in digital marketing and advertising. Yeah. So especially during the pandemic, a lot of new brands came to be. A lot of even big brands started doing digital marketing and advertising for the first time, meaning that things got more competitive. So if you were running Google shopping ads or running ads on Facebook or trying to rank organically, there was a huge lift in brands competing for the same terms, competing for the same ad spots. As competition gets fiercer, that impacts conversion rates, that impacts the way that people buy. It, it elevates what people are even looking for too, meaning if there's five websites next to each other and five of them have more reviews than you, it just makes it harder if you're not able to compete to be able to get sales or the same sales that you were getting post-COVID and even a couple of years ago online. Yeah. So more, more people out there. Yeah. You're competing with more people. So what do we need to do as an e-commerce business owner to stand out? What advice would you give someone? What are the tricks? How do they stand out from the crowd? I mean, number one, figure out what people are searching for. Like a lot of times when I'm working with a client, I literally search the terms that I want or feel would be fitting for the brand and see what other competitors are showing up. Meaning I can see what their product pages look like. I can see how many reviews they have and being able to analyze what the competition is doing. I mean, the number of reviews you have on a product, especially on Google really matter. Also, if you're selling similar products, also seeing how your price, what the free shipping threshold is for other brands, like all of those things are really going to matter because when they're comparing different products next to each other, if you want to win, you have to win based on quality, based on price, based on offering. And to be able to do that varies by every single website and every single brand, but you need to know what your competitors are doing if you're going to get the sale over them. Yeah. So find out what the competitors are doing. And is it doing a one-up on them? Yes and no. I mean, it's, again, it's competition, but really how can you stand out? So for example, if you're not offering free shipping and you're charging $20 for shipping and everybody else is offering free shipping, if you don't offer it, then people are going to go to the next offering. Or another example I have a lot of the times is, if you're a beauty brand and you're showing product images, a lot of people only show images of the product label and not like what the consistency of the product looks like inside the bottle. And then if you look at a lot of the good competitors, you'll be able to see, oh, their products show people putting it on. They show what the consistency looks like. So if you don't have that, then your competition is going to beat you out. So that's just one example of what I look for. but for brands that are struggling or brands that are not hitting the return on ad spend they're looking for, those are kinds of ways that you could try and get over that hurdle when you're stuck and don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. What are some of the latest, like recent trends that you see in the digital marketing space? I mean, AI is really taken off. I mean, I'm sure everyone listening has heard of like chat GBT and mm -hmm. things like that. So they're very powerful tools. Like I've actually used it even before this year. 
it can really save you a lot of time, but it's a tool meaning you have to know how to use it properly. So for example, if you're an SEO or trying to do SEO, you can have it write a blog post for you. You could have it write keywords and write ad copy for you, but you just need to make sure that you're reading it over, that you're giving the right commands, that you're really understanding because it's a machine that will do exactly what you tell it to do. And I keep reading articles of like, all people using it, people are using it to write papers, people are using it to write sermons. Like there's so many people hmm. that are just, can I expedite some of the work that I'm doing? And it's not that simple because you still need to put in the work and you still need to QA and you want it to still stay within your brand because if you have a brand voice, like you want it to sound authentic too. I'm fine using AI tools. It's just leveraging them the right way. I think the other way that AI is being used as well is through like performance max ads on Google, for example, meaning the performance max ads take away the use of bidding on keywords one by one. They take away creating different placements for YouTube versus display versus shopping. So it's all automated, but it's knowing how to leverage that automation, meaning one, you have to have your conversion tracking set up properly. Two, you need to put in all the assets that they ask you to put in. So if they ask for 20 images, you don't put in three, you put in all 20. And again, with audiences too, you want to make sure you put in your remarketing audiences, you put in suggested keywords, like you follow everything that it's asking you to do. So it's leveraging that AI, but you have to still put in the work and there's no really shortcuts to it. Yeah, that's a really important point because it, it's not a replacement of human intelligence, right? It's artificial intelligence. You know, you still need the human intelligence. And I think that comes, you know, working with clients in the e-commerce space. It's really understanding your customer, your prospect, really getting in their head okay. with their needs and desires and, and that, right? So it's really knowing who are we serving, who are we selling to, who are we providing the product to. And then it's also knowing our brand and how our brand fits the prospect person that's, you know, viewing, viewing the ad and AI, it's a start, but it's not the end. <laughs> so right. now most of our listeners, viewers, they're running a seven figure e-commerce business. So they're looking to scale. They want to take it to, you know, maybe eight figures or maybe it's, you know, they want to, you know, it's 1 million, maybe they want to take it to 3 million and so forth. So my question is, how do you scale an existing advertising account? Because most of them have gotten to where they're at and most likely, you know, in all like the audience or most likely they've got a paid, you know, they use paid ads to do that. Right. So my recommendation is scale slowly, but like consistently. So I would increase budget, say 20%, give the algorithm like a week or two to really learn, make sure the ROAS stays. And then if it does continue to scale from there. So if you're able to say increase your budget per day from say 200 to like 250, you put it for a week, you see how it does, you make sure that you're still hitting a return to be profitable and then scale from there. And sometimes what ends up happening is if you spend more and say you're not hitting the return that you were looking to hit, that means it could be a website issue or you really need to improve the brand experience. So what else can I do on my website to be able to spend more, to reach more people and still keep my conversion rates fairly consistent? Because think of it this way, if you're bringing more people to the website and they're not converting at the same level and you're either getting the same amount of customers or maybe a little bit less, you just then need to figure out, okay, what can I do to improve the conversion rate on my website? So maybe it's getting more reviews, maybe it's adding more FAQs. Like for example, a lot of e-commerce stores use Shopify or WooCommerce, and maybe there's other plugins you can use. Maybe there's other things that you could do there, or maybe it's just getting traffic from other sources as well, because a lot of times with paid ads, it's one touch point in the funnel. So maybe 
if you're relying on ad 90 to 100 percent maybe you do more on the seo side maybe you do more with affiliates because they all go hand in hand so if the conversion rate is not staying consistent then maybe it's that you just need more traffic overall to fit into that funnel to be able to get more sales hmm. that's great advice how do you determine you know, what channels to focus on? Is it, you know, is it matrix related? You know, are you kind of looking at matrix across the different channels? And if, if that's the case, what are the, what are the most important matrix to look at? I mean, Google and Facebook are still the most basic. Like those are the two largest channels. There are some more niche channels where you can evaluate two to add on to your budget based on who your audience is. Like for example, there's Pinterest, which is great for women who are 25 to 45 mostly. There's TikTok, which yields to a gen a, like a younger audience. There's Bing ads, which is more for like older people or more tech savvy people. So there's there's also niche platforms. I mean, what to really look for though is a return on ad spend where you're profitable. So that can vary by brand and can even vary by product category. Because you're paying money for the ads and if someone else is running it for you, you're paying for them too. So what return on ad spend do you need in order for it to be worth it to even break even? So that's one thing that you need to figure out because if you're selling a product, say you're selling something and you're getting a 2x return, but you need a 3x or a 4x to be profitable and you're selling things at a loss, then you can't continue to sell it unless you have a strategy via email to upsell and figure out what that is. So for example, a lot of beauty brands or a lot of brands that sell very small ticket items that are like $14, $15, $30, $50, $50, they really struggle to scale with ads because if a cost per ad, it costs as much as a sale does or close to it, it's hard to really scale the ad budget and say, I'm going to spend a million dollars on ads because it's just very hard to earn the conversion rate that's going to be profitable at scale to be able to sell it to even a break-even point. Mm -hmm. What are some of the best Google ad strategies? I mean, one thing that I like to look at is based on like state demographics and time of day. So for example, I might see states in West Virginia or Maine or South Dakota or like certain states just don't really perform. And then if I'm able to look at the conversion data and exclude those states, then it can help the ads to be more efficient. Or I see like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. or 4 a.m. Those hours don't usually perform well in terms mm. of a return on ad spend. So like Google will try and spend it no matter what, your full budget. So if you're seeing times of day or states that are not performing, and that goes with products as well. If you're seeing products where the return isn't there, you could exclude those products as well. So really getting granular into the data, even though it's very AI driven, can help you to earn a better return. Mm -hmm. This has been super, super good, super helpful. You mentioned websites, you know, increasing budgets. And if, you know, if you're not getting the return by increasing budgets or take a look at your website, what are some important features, you know, that every website should have? Product reviews is very important. So, I mean, I try and get the argument like, oh, my brand is well known or my products are too high end to have reviews. And like, that's not really the case because if you don't have them, somebody else will. And especially for a person who's buying it online without trying it on or seeing it in person, seeing what other people are saying can really make a difference. Other things that like before someone adds a car, people want to know what the cost of shipping is going to be. So making it clear, like if you offer free shipping or a free shipping's over $100 or $150, putting that in the banner, other things that really are important too are like, do you have a loyalty program? Do you have a chat feature where people can chat and ask questions? Do you have good product photography and video that really demonstrates the value of it? Are you able to see a full product description bulleted out with the features? 
that people are looking for. So those are high level, the kinds of things that I'm looking for. And again, it can vary industry by industry, but high level, those are the things that I really look for. And again, if I'm able to look into what it is from view content to add to cart to initiate checkout to purchase, there's going to be drop off at every single level. But if you're able to see, for example, add to cart rate is very low, then that means that people are viewing content and the product pages are not getting enough people to add to cart. And then that's why a conversion rate could not be as high as it could or should be because people are missing something on those product pages to get them to add to cart. Yeah, makes sense. So as we come close to the end, Drew, you've shared with us so many insights. What are like, say, three things you absolutely want the listener, the viewer to take away from this? You know, they're doing a, you know, a million, they want to get to 2 million or 3 million in, in, in top line revenues. Like what are the most important things they should think and focus in on? Well, number one is the website. So how can I continue to improve my website experience to get to that next level? Mm. Number two is take a competitor analysis of who is better than you, who is bigger than you, what are they doing that I'm not? And number three is take a full circle approach and just say, if I want to make it to eight figures or I want to grow another 500,000, don't just say ads is going to solve the problem for me. How can I improve SEO? How can I improve my organic social media? How can I do everything full cycle? Because everything is going to work together in tangent. So if you bring one up and you bring all of them up at the same time, that's going to create that good user experience and it's going to help your conversion rate across the board. That's awesome. Drew, what's the best place? What's the best way for folks to reach out to you? Sure. So you can find me on my website, digitaldrewsem.com and on Instagram at digitaldrewsem. Great. Drew, thank you so much. This was so good. Really enjoyed yeah, thank it. Thank you for having me, Celine. You take care. You too.